Hey, good morning. Thanks for joining us for our Thursday morning uh, reflection time together. It's always good to be with you as we open up God's Word and reflect upon uh, what God's saying to us this morning through His Word. I hope you were able to join us last night for Bible study. Uh, you can go back and watch it anytime at stm-umc.org. Click on the link that's the media, and there you'll see a link for Bible study. So I would encourage you to go watch our Bible study if you missed it. We talked about uh, we talked about the what's what um the power of um of um the empty grave and how the grave destroyed the works of sin and the works of the devil and how the empty grave um, restored everything. So um. It's a it's a it's a great conversation about the empty grave and about what God um, can do in our lives and what God wants to do. So um, so I would encourage you to go back and watch that if you haven't had a chance to. Uh, it's always uh, good to have our Wednesday night Bible study together. I'm looking forward next year to uh, next semester rather being able to be in person. Uh, that'll be a lot of fun because uh, I miss the conversations we have with Bible study. So I look forward to that. Um, well, today um, we're going to be we're in Galatians still. In Galatians has. So many wonderful verses, so many just individual verses that are just so great. And today's uh, passage um, kind of um, goes to that for in my mind. And we're we're going to read Galatians four, where we read one through seven. Galatians four one through seven. My point is this: heirs, as long as they are minors, are no better than slaves, though they are the owners of all the property. They remain under the guardians and trustees until the date set by the Father. So with us, while we were minors, we were enslaved to the elemental spirits of this world. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, that we may receive adoption as children. And because you were the children of God, he has sent the spirit of his son into your, our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you're no longer a slave, but a child, and if a child, then also an heir through God. Okay. A lot of good stuff here. Um, verse, I want to really focus on verse four and five, but uh, verse six says, "Because you are the, are the children, God, because you because you are children, God has spent, sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father." Um, Abba is the um, is the Aramaic word that really best translates. It's it, the Aramaic word for father, but it's really it's daddy. I mean, Aramaic is would be understood as best in our context as daddy. And um, daddy is not a formal title, but it's a term of affection. It's a term, term of family identification. And so God is not a distant father to our needs. Uh, God is not a cold-hearted, um, distant person to what we experience, but God is a daddy. God's a daddy who loves us, who walks with us, who longs to restore us, longs to save us. God is not, yes, he is our father. That is his formal title. Sure, that's a, he's a father. That's a theological statement. Say his father is to speak of the Trinity. To, as we talked of in our sermon series a few months back, to speak of father is to speak, that is a Trinitarian statement, that God is father, Christ is son, the spirit. The spirit. These are Trinitarian titles. So God is our father, yes, but he's our daddy. And uh, I think that's I think that's a huge thing. Um, I can't speak to everyone's life. Not everyone's had a great experience with their daddy. I, I was, um, you know, I've had a mixed bag. My biological father was uh, not active in my life at all. Um, he murdered my mother. I mean, I, he's a non he's a non entity to me. But my daddy, Connie Stoddard's a good man, who raised me who loves me, who shaped me, who modeled the Christian life for me. So daddy's a pretty pretty important title, and that's what God is for us. He's our daddy. But I want to I wanna really focus on verses 4 and 5, though, where it says this. And this is so cool. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as children. Okay, that that uh, that phrase there in the fullness of time is a beautiful phrase. The Bible the Bible's just full of beautiful phrases, and the phrase in the fullness of time to me is a beautiful phrase um, because basically it means this: at just the right moment, at just the right moment, at just the right moment in world history, at just the right moment in history, Jesus Christ was born, and there there would have probably been 
no better time in human history for Jesus to have been born than when he was and where he was born. He was born at the right moment, at the right place, in the right everything. He was born at the Israel. Uh, that, that spot of land doesn't look great, but it is the, on, the only way you're going to get from Europe and Asia Minor, which is Turkey, to Arabia, to Africa, to Asia, is to go through Israel. I, I used it for those of you who live in Jackson. If you don't live in Jackson, you live close to somewhere probably that has this. The only way from Madison, we're getting to Boca Chitta, is to use the stack. That's it. You're going through the stack. There's no other way. There's, I mean, you could go down 49 and go and go over to, to, to Terry, I, I guess, if you wanted to. I wouldn't do it. It could take you out of the way, you know. Um, but you're going through the stack. It's the best way to get there. It's really the only way to get there. So if you were in Rome and you wanted to go to India, you were going through Israel. If you were in, if you were in Antioch and you wanted to go to Alexandria, you were going through Israel. It was where you were going. Jesus was born at the right place where so many people from across the world were going to come and interact and hear. He was born at the right moment in a time of relative peace in Rome uh, where there was trade and industry and people were going here and there. He was born at exactly the right time, place. Even doing his ministry in Galilee, which seems off the beaten path in Israel, but Galilee is about the only place in Israel where you can pretty easily get from spot to spot with no major problem. Uh, Galilee really is, it would be only like the interstate of Israel with the Sea of Galilee, because you could hop in your boat and go from here to there with no problem. It was, it was easy access, uh, roads going into every town. It was easy to get around in. Um, it was the ideal place, the ideal spot. So at just the right time, at just the right time, in what the scripture says, in the fullness of time, at just the right moment, Jesus was born in the perfect place, in the perfect location, in the perfect time of world history, and to the perfect people. Mary, is, Mary and Joseph are incredibly holy people. The holy family is the perfect family. Mary, when confronted with the burden in many ways, the gift of what's going to happen, says to God, let it be unto me according to thy word. She says, yes, through faith I will be obedient to your mission. Joseph, even though he risked great embarrassment, um, says, I will raise Jesus as my son, as my I will be his daddy, his earthly daddy. Um, so at the fullness of time, right moment, right place, right people. Jesus Christ was born to forgive us of our sins, to destroy the power of death, and to bring us home to the Father. So um, God's got a plan. God's got a plan. God is not called off guard or called uh, unaware of all that's happening, but God has a plan in all things. God had a perfect plan with Jesus, and God's got a plan in our lives. God's plan did not just magically end with the birth of Christ. But God had a plan for Jesus, and God has a plan for the church. And frankly, God has a plan for you. So the same God that in the fullness of time had everything right for Jesus, for his birth, in the fullness of time, God has you where he has you. God has you in the place he wants you, doing the thing he has you doing for this moment. In the fullness of time, yes, Jesus was born. At just the right moment, Jesus was born in world history. At just the right moment, Jesus came to begin the process of reserve, to, to, to finalize the process of reversing what sin had taken in the fullness of time at just the right moment. Well, as Esther's told, it is perhaps for such a moment as this that you, that you and I are where we are. God has us where he has us right now and where he needs us for this moment. So in the fullness of time, Jesus Christ was born to free us from our sins so that we could, through the Spirit, say, Abba, Father, that we could know uh, the love of our perfect Heavenly Father, that we could know the love of our Heavenly Daddy, if you will. In the fullness of time, God had a, had a plan. Friends, in the fullness of time, at just this moment, at just this right moment, God has a plan for you, and God has a plan for me. Our job is to, um, to listen, to seek, to understand, and to follow and obey that plan. God has a plan for me and for you right now. And he has us where he has us in this moment for that plan. In the fullness of time. 
Y'all, we can always trust the plan of God. We can always trust the timing of God. So today, no matter where you find yourself, may you trust in that fullness of God and in the fullness of his plan. Okay? Love you guys. Praying for you. Have a great Thursday, and we'll see you bright and early tomorrow for Bible study. Have a great day. See you then.